Good morning, everyone. Today for Vlogmas Day 2, sorry, that was really loud, we're going to be making bean and bacon soup. This is a recipe that I developed, but it's really based on like a thousand recipes that were popular during the Depression, during rationing during World War II. This is a real hearty, home-style, stick-to-your-ribs kind of dish. And it's also very simple. It's very economical. In fact, I'm going to do a breakdown in the um, comments or actually in the in the kind of like little, you know, blurb area. I'll put a breakdown of how much it actually cost. But what we're starting with is, first of all, two cups of Great Northern Beans, which I soaked last night in just a little bit of water. This is in my crock pot. The crock pot's already on high. And there are six cups of water in here and three bay leaves. Next, we have two cups of carrots, one and a half cups of onions, and about a cup of celery, give or take. And then this over here is just for garnish. This is some green onion. And we're gonna use that as garnish. You can see the very white parts of the green onion I put in the bottom. Sea salt, black pepper, and shocking oregano. We then have three strips of bacon. Over here, I have the bacon drippings, which I've saved over medium heat. And this is what we're gonna be sauteing our vegetables in. This is where all of our flavor is coming from. Let's see if I can set this up so it's be easier to see. This is always the hard part, guys. We know we've been here before. Ugh. It's always the most difficult part of these cooking videos that I try and do for you guys is getting a good shot of the pan without dropping your phone into bacon drippings. Okay. I think, damn. This is the reason I spend so much time on this. All right, I'm gonna just try and do it one-handed. All right, so this is a not, this is fairly close to a basic mirepoix. It's not exact, but it's pretty close. So the first thing we're gonna add is our onion into these bacon drippings. We are going to grab all these little bits of bacon that got stuck to the pan. The reason you can, you can do this much soup, and this is gonna end up being, I would say six to eight servings, depending on what, how many, you know, what size your serving is, uh, how big the appetites are of the people you're eating, um, and only have three strips of bacon in it, which is the serving size for one person, is because you are relying on the bacon drippings. Bacon drippings are fabulous to chefs, but to, you know, housewives, your grandma back in the day who were trying to make ends meet on low budgets, man, these were like gold. Nobody threw away bacon drippings. Um, a lot of you probably still remember having a grandparent who had the thing on the stove that was all the bacon drippings <laughs> from all the food, all the bacon they made. That's why they did it, kids, because it was just so, so important to them to have these fabulous, fabulous flavor of the bacon. So that our celery just went in, and you'll notice there were some leaves in there. I really love using the celery leaves. Um, they have a very particular flavor. I wouldn't exactly call it like parsley. It's a little more sublime than parsley it doesn't like you don't taste it right away and go oh this has parsley in it you know it's a little bit more subtle than that but I love using it and you know what we don't want to throw anything away that's the kind of recipe we have here so we're just letting all this stuff sizzle in the bacon drippings there our carrots are going in now this is going to be interesting if I can do this one-handed <laughs> getting our carrots nice and coated. And to this mixture, our basic mirepoix, we are going to add sea salt. It would help if I took the lids off first, right? So just like generous amount of sea salt. You, we're adding this to the vegetables and not to the beans because when you're cooking with beans, when you add salt, it actually makes the beans cook slower. It may keep them firm. So you don't want to add too much salt to any type of bean dish because what you're going to end up with is undercooked beans. Nobody wants that. Some black pepper. If you guys needed actual amounts on this, I would say probably a tablespoon of salt and two teaspoons of black pepper. And then this to this we're going to add 
our surprise ingredient, oregano. Now, I wish I had a little more oregano for this, but it'll be okay. You know, this is that kind of a recipe. This is one of those, we're going to use up what we have kind of recipes. So this is, I would say this is close to a teaspoon of oregano. I would have really liked to have used a little bit more. This is dried oregano, so it's going to, you know, it's going to give us a good flavor anyway. But I would have liked to use more. And we're just going to let this simmer for, eh, not much longer. I'd say maybe another minute tops. You can see already everything's getting nice and golden brown. Whoops, just threw some on the floor. Kitchen goddess must have needed that. That was a offering to her. We're going to let this go for about a minute. I'm going to put you guys on pause for one minute and get myself a little more situated. All right, guys, we're back. So here's my beans. In the pan over here, we have the beautiful mirepoix, which I'm just going to start spooning into the beans. I can already feel the water in the crock pot getting really hot, which is good. I am going to have, I'm going to end up cooking this on high pretty much all day. I want these beans to be super soft. This dish ends up being super creamy, super soft, super yummy, every other possible word you can think of. Like I said before, it's very stick to your ribs. And we're just going to basically leave this in the crock pot on high. It's about 9.30 now. I'm going to say this is going to be ready at about 4.30 which is perfect. It'll be, you know, right around dinner time. And we're just going to let this cook till 4.30. Now, some of you are probably asking, why didn't you put the bacon in? Here's the reason. As these beans break down, they are going to get super duper creamy. Um, in order to not have such a kind of flat consistency for the palate, this bacon, which is fairly crispy, I'm going to crumble up when it cools and put it in maybe the last half hour. Like I said, this will probably be done at 4.30. At 4.30, I'll turn this off. I will put this crumbled bacon into it and just let it kind of warm up with the soup instead of putting it now. This would get soft over the course of, you know, how many hours I'm going to be cooking it to eight hours or whatever I'm going to be cooking it today. So I want that little crunch from the bacon, that crispiness from the bacon. That's another reason I want to put in the onion. I want that bite from the raw onion because this is going to be a very like warm and comforting kind of thing, but it's also going to be palate wise, it's going to be kind of creamy, almost flat. Both of these are going to give a real boost to these beans. Um, like I said, I'll put the recipe down below. I'll do a price breakdown for you. Um, if anybody had any questions about how I cut up the vegetables. I did a fairly small dice. Wasn't uniform. You don't have to worry about that. The only reason I did a small dice is when you're making soup, the reason the soup spoon is so big, and I've said this before, is because you're trying to get a little bit of everything that's in the soup onto the soup spoon. So that's the only thing you have to know. There's nothing fancy about this soup. I guarantee you it's going to be amazing. Um, and I will talk to you guys soon. And I am going to put a picture of this when it's all finished as the thumbnail so you can see what it looks like. And I will see you in tomorrow's Vlogmas video. Please like, subscribe, ring the bell, and leave a comment. I love the comments. Okay, so give me a, call, give me a comment, guys, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.